Okay, today we're going to redo an old fireplace. Uh, it was made out of that old rough brick. You've seen a lot of them, it may be in your home, maybe not. If you'll see right here, this is what the fireplace actually looked like, is this right here. Okay, now if you look over here, the part that we already have finished, this is what we want it to look like. Uh, video don't show the exact detail, but on the website I'm going to have this broke down with better pictures that you can actually see. Uh, what I've done is I went ahead and did most of the black up here and here and I let this go. So I'm going to show you how to put the black on and then we'll go back through and I'll be able to show you how I did uh, put the other color on top. So there's two colors in this and what we've used is for the base is the bow spar. It's a concrete stain. Now I know it's all black and you can't really see it. This is of the solid. Okay, and there's two types. You've got transfer, semi-transparent, and you got a solid. This is a solid, and I used it and had it tinted black, or ebony, or whatever they call it. But uh, you'll put this on first. That's what you see up here. And what that does is it gives it a good even flow for the next color. You can do different colors. They've got a lot of different choices you can make. Uh, you can go onto their website probably and see it. But uh, it is very good, uh, you'll love it, but this is a, a solid, it's also a sealer. After you get this, we'll jump back through, and this is the colors. Now, we got this right here, and as you'll see, it's semi-transparent, and this is the color you see that we put on the surface of the brick. Now, this here can also be, been, be mixed in different colors. So, the... We chose a lighter brown, I forget the name of it, you have to look it up, but uh, you can get these in different colors, a darker one here. I mean, they've really got a lot large selection, so you can make the brick look whatever you want. So right now I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how we, uh, we did this. And uh, what I've done is I put the black, or the ebony, in a spray bottle. Now there's two ways you can put the black on them up here. Okay, you can use a sponge brush or you can use a brush or whatever you want. You can get in here and dab it in, but when you're working around this brick and that mortar, it's very difficult to use this. That stuff runs and splatters everywhere. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to try this. So I put it in a spray bottle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this section right here for you so you can see it and see how I uh, put it on. So we'll go ahead and move this out of the way. And, uh, if you look, all you got to do is just sit here and pump it and see it just start spraying on, you know. And the thing I like about using the spray is that you can get in the cracks and crannies and that you can't get in the, with a brush. So you really got a better finish. Also, you put it goes on heavier with the spray. Uh, the little foam brush tears up real fast, don't last very long. I think you would like the spray, but it really goes on. You see how quick it goes on. Now you see that white spot right there. It's just covered up. But that white spot uh, was paint. And this stain, the solid, will actually cover that right over. Okay, so you don't have to worry about your different colors coming. Uh, just, just sit there and spray it down. Kind of move the bottle from side to side. Now, if you notice, I got a ground cloth down. And uh, because this stuff does splatter, it splatters more when you're using a sponge because as you're brushing over it, it flips it out and you'll get stained five feet away. So by using the bottle, you kind of get it under control. But now this here is going to get painted, so I'm not worried about taping it off. But if you have a wall that's finished, you might want to tape it off and use plastic. Don't use a regular drop cloth because this is a stain, it's like a water. It will absorb right through and right into the wall or the floor or whatever. So make sure you use a plastic. The drop cloth we got now is actually a tablecloth with a plastic top. So it will keep it from uh, soaking through. Now we're going to be re on this, so it really don't matter if I get some on the wall or not. So, but anyway, see how fast that goes on just by the spray. You know, now you don't want to set the spray gun to where or the spray nozzle, rather, where it goes on like a stream, you want it as a mist, and you just, you see that, 
how easy that goes on. Okay? Now, you can do that. And you can see right there, you get up under your underside. It's just a lot easier. And it's a little less mess. So you come around your corners. Any place that you see, you might want to darken up. Uh, also, if you wanted to, you can try this. Depending on how your mortar joint comes out, you might be able to do two coats with this. But you gotta let this dry before the next one. Now this here is already dry, so we'll go ahead and jump to the next step. But that, that spray bottle, you're really gonna love putting it on with this. Uh, you might wanna wear gloves too, because this stuff is a stain. Now it's an oil base, so it's gonna take uh, mineral spirits or something like that to get this off. So, but it will come off. Uh, but we'll go ahead and put this down for now. And we're going to go ahead and get ready to put the top or the finish on. And what we've used is a, uh, a sea sponge. Okay. Now, this is why I've already been using it. And if you see that, See how porous it is. And what that does is as you spot that on, and you're not brushing this, you're just patting it. So you actually take this right here, dip it in your paint or your stain, and you just pat it. And you don't want too much on this because it'll run and cover up your mortar joints. And you don't want that. You want your mortar joints to be black. And that's your look you want is with it. But just pat it softly. And you can do a different design. So you go here, 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 here. Or you can do it as dark or as light as you want. If you want more black showing through, you can just, you know, pat here and there. <coughs> the thing is about this uh, method right here, if you don't like it, redo it. It cuts, coats right over, do it again until you get what you want. But with this, if you go light and you look at it and it ain't what you want, do it again until you get what you want. So you can slowly... You know, don't don't sit there and rub it because it just smeared. It really looks like crap. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and open this up and uh, stir it up. Now, another thing about this type of stain is it separates quick. So you're going to want to uh, stir it, keep it stirred uh, as you use it, and that's so you get the even color. The black is really notorious for that. Uh, but when you put it in that spray bottle and you move it around, it kind of keeps it mixed. If you're using a brush, you're going to have to keep that can stirred up as you do it. Because you can actually look up the top and see it separating. And then your color will go different. It'll be real light. So you got to keep these mixed up pretty good. Now, get my stick here. We'll mix this up. And if you look inside here, I don't know if you can see the color. See? This is a semi-transparent. Now this is already starting to separate. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix this up a little bit. Get the dyes together. That way we've got a good even color. Now, I used the black on this. And by using the black, I wanted this a little lighter because when it hits that black and dries, it's going to dry a darker color. If you wanted this lighter color, you can actually put a lighter color, so it might be a grayish type or a lighter color, and then this will come out lighter too. Uh, you can also use two or three colors. You don't just have to use one. You can go back through and lightly pat with one color, go back through and lightly pat with another, and you can come up and get more depth, more feel. Uh, I know a guy that did a concrete countertop, and he it really almost looked like granite. I'll see if I can get a picture and post that on the website for you. But uh, it really, really comes out great. And not only can you do your brick with this, the thing I like about this, it is a concrete stain. It is exterior stain. You can stain your sidewalks. You can stain your driveway. You can stain whatever you want with it, you know, as far as the concrete or aggregate. And uh, you can get real creative with it. So some of you uh, artists out there could probably do wonders with this as far as the outside. I think you'll like this. Now we've got it mixed. I'm just going to set this right here. This here is wet and it's still drying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap that in. You see it's, it's all soaked. Now I'll rub mine off. If you want to put another can or uh, another uh, 
bucket or something like that you can rub this off with. Now, as we take this, if you'll see this, see, we just pat it, see? Don't pat it hard, just like, <laughs> until you get the pattern you want, you know? See? Pretty easy, you know? And like I said, you can go light, like, you know, let's say if you just want something like that, and then you come back later, so we know about this little, little light, pat it again until you get the color that you want and the texture you want. So, as you see, I mean, I just soaked that sponge one time and look. Now see, I can back over this. Now you see the different colors between the two. I don't know if you can see that, where this is duller and this is brighter. Uh, and that's because when it dries, the black behind there will actually pull the color down a little bit. Anyway, we just, we got over here. And it's still a little wet on that side right there. And that's how you do this. That little sea sponge right there, still got plenty on it. See, I can go up here, I can just keep going with it, you know. However I want to do it. I mean, it holds a lot, it really don't take a lot of this to do. It comes in a gallon. Uh, if you find a good person working at Lowe's or wherever you buy this at that can mix, they might be able to split this up in half gallons for you. You know, I don't know, you have to talk to them. <coughs> but uh, it'll come in a gallon. And I use, like I said, use a solid uh, sealer for the base, regardless of whatever color you want. And then use a transparent for the top for sponging in. And then you're using a sea sponge Pick them up at Lowe's, Home Depot, or any other paint shop or craft shop. Uh, you'll like them. They're porous, probably about 10 bucks, I don't know, for a big piece. And uh, when you're done, or you're like right now, I'll just stick it in a baggie, seal it, and a couple days go by. If I just need to go back, I can go back and pull it out, and it's still wet. So, But anyway, that's, uh, that's how we do this. I'm going to go ahead and finish this section here off. and. We'll get the bottom and uh, go to the website and I'll see if I can get some pictures posted of everything and maybe break it down with some information or maybe some links for you to uh, find the products, you know, a little easier and different methods of doing it. Uh, well, another method you could use if you didn't want to use a sea sponge, you can do a method called dry brushing. Now, dry brushing, you would put it, still put the base on, okay, and you'd have a stiff brush and you put in and it just barely rubs over and it don't go down in the cracks and crannies. Uh, but it will go, uh, it'll give it a different look, a different texture. So, but with this stain, it's really hard to do because stain is more like water. I mean, it's really, really thin. So it's a little more difficult. That's why the sea sponge works so much better. You might be able to use a regular sponge. It just comes up with a little, you know, a little denser pattern. You won't get as many holes like this in here does. So maybe that's not what you want. Uh, then after all this is done, you can spray a little sealer on it and it should be finished. Uh, you can probably do this in uh, a day's time. Come out here in the morning, spray this on, let it dry for the after, you know, up until the afternoon, then go back at it with your brush or your sponge and start patting it on and it's finished. So now you go from uh, the old fireplace, the old beat up, dirty looking brick, to something a little more cleaner. So, and whatever design you want to choose is completely up to you. Like I said, it comes in a lot of colors. I got a big pamphlet. You can choose your colors you want. Have it mixed right there to shake it up for you. Come home and you can have at it. Just clean your brick off real good. With this stuff here, it's not necessarily that it has to be scrubbed down. Uh, I use scrubbing bubbles on some of it to get that foam effect to help pull some of the dirt out of the cracks, but you don't even have to do that. You can just take and wash it down just get the dust out, it's the only thing you have to do. You don't have to degrease it, you don't have to get the paint off of it. If there's paint on it, you know, a lot of these bro bricks, they'll have white bricks in it. This stuff will cover right over. You see it, it just covers it right over. So, if you uh, have any questions, feel free to email me at allens at allenswoodworking.com and visit us at our website at Allen's Woodworking. And uh, I'll post some links and uh, See what you, what you think about it and catch you on the next one.